Okay, we are continuing on designing for additive manufacturing. Uh, we talked before about the uh, designing process for the SLA 3D printing. Uh, we will continue on talking about the post-processing uh, limitations, pass and cons, and uh, the, the good sides and the bad sides of, the S of designing for SLA 3D printing. Uh, for post-processing, uh, you have a lot of choices to, to, to choose your surface finish. Uh, it can be achieved uh, that can, it can be achieved on any part that you print through the SLA uh, printing method. Uh, usually the surface finish that that you want is governed by the cost and the application that you are looking for. Uh, the bad side of the SLA technology, that the parts are most likely are happening to be small and the your prints need to be oriented in a certain angle and a certain way and usually it requires in most cases uh, supported structures to be attached to the model all um, of these uh, criteria are affecting your the 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 quality of the uh, surface finish of your final product uh, as we talked before these supports will leave marks on the surface of your part and in, in most cases it will create uneven surfaces that will affect uh, the beauty of, of your final part. Um, so the most famous post-processing process is the basic support removal. So you, you already created a supporting structure and you want to remove this structure through breaking it off or cutting it from the model this will leave some bumpy, sur bumpy surfaces um, especially for the surfaces in contact with the support material um, if you need a high quality surface finish then you need to add extra material uh, so you want to count in mind to have extra 0.1 millimeter um, of thickness, of length, of width for your part so that you can do all kinds of processing on that part so with, without taking out any of the original di dimensions and for dimensional accuracies for your part uh, the good points for the basic support removal if you want to use this kind of post-processing it gives you a complete control over the finish how you want to finish the part then uh, when you have a critical vertical hole diameter uh, that is small then you do drilling after the printing and then you will have a high accuracy uh, hole diameter then uh, usually you will have high accuracy for the overall geometry um, this so in this way your geometry will not be altered by any way the bad sides of using this kind of post processing is it's not very nice Firstly, then the, you need some kind of, of scale so that you can make a really nice to see clean finish. And uh, finally, the surface finish need to be considered in the design by adding a certain thickness as we mentioned before. Uh, so if we can see kind of visualization for uh, the basic support removal post processing, out of five, the finish will be one out of five. Uh, the tolerances will be 3 out of 5, the speed will be 5 out of 5. So you'll have the part fast, but that's, that will be on, on the bad side of finishing and on the, it will reduce the, your uh, tolerances accuracy as well. Uh, these are some examples of all, it's one single part that been printed through the SLA 3D printing, but it went through uh, several types of uh, post-processing so you can see some post-processing is really miserable some of it is just medium in quality some of it is really nice presentable quality we will talk about each of these post-processing methods for SLA as moving forward firstly you can use or secondly you can use the sanded support nips um, so you can uh, remove the support structure then you can expose that supported structure with some kind of um, sanding uh, paper to, to make the surface more cleaner. The good sides for the sanding support nips that you will have accurate surfaces that are close enough to the 3D model and uh, you will have a kind of matte finish that will hide any 
uh, imperfections. The bad side is that you can have uneven surfaces on the side where the support was located. Then it's not uh, very attractive in terms of beauty and uh, aesthetically. So, uh, especially if you have a clear uh, resin on it. Um, if you can see here an uh, overview of the sanded support nibs post processing, finish can take two out of five, tolerances four out of five, speed up four out of five. How fast you can get your part post processed can be four out of five. You need to spend some time on it. Uh, this is how your part will look like after doing the sanded support nibs. It depends on your application. Some people will have this, will consider this as acceptable part, post-processed part. Some of, some people they they need more, um, more quality in on the part post-processing. Then the other method that you can use for post-processing of SLA 3D printed parts is wet sanding. Um, it can be done. Um, basically, it can give you the smoothest surface finish, uh, depending on the sandpaper graduation you're using. Um, on the side where you don't have supports for that side of the model uh, only you focus on the build lines where you need to apply sanding um, you can basically achieve it with a single high grade of sandpaper then no graduation needed um, the good sides of wet sanding is uh, firstly it have excellent smooth finish it's very good for complex geometries then it can give you uh, good surface pre preparation uh, good surface preparation if you are planning to do some painting on your part the bad sides it will reduce the accuracy on the supported side and then the wa there's a water being used uh, with the sand this is why called with sanding which will result in some light spots on the print uh, overview of the post processing process uh, Finishing will take 3 out of 5, tolerances will take 3 out of 5, speed will take 3 out of 5. Uh, the other post-processing method is the mineral oil finish. This finish is uh, similar to the wet sanded finish, uh, but there's an exception um, that the mineral oil layer added after the sanding process. That's what's different than, than the wet uh, sanded process. Uh, the mineral oil will help hiding the light spots on the model and that will create nice e and even finish. Uh, you can use this kind of post-processing if you want to do uh, some mechanical parts. Um, this will reduce the friction and lubricate the surface as well. The good size, so it will give you an almost transparent finish for the clear resins. The bad things is paint will not adhere to that kind of surface. If you are planning to do some painting on your part, then don't go with this post-processing method. Uh, overview finishing will have three out of five tolerances three out of five speed three out of five uh, this is an example for the wet sanded and this is an example of the mineral oil finish just a little bit better for the mineral oil finish than the wet sanded you don't have these white spots on the on the surface which will give it a little clarity uh, again depending on your preferences some people think this is perfect some people think this is acceptable some people don't like that for their application then you can do the spray paint um, or called a clear ultra ultraviolet protective acry acrylic uh, you spray the painting uh, to conceal the layer li lines and reduce the need to sand the unsupported side of the model um, this varnish will protect the model from yellowing and post curing by limiting the ultraviolet exposure uh, usually acrylic paints will not adhere uh, very good to the flexible resin um, if the flexible resin need to be glossy um, um, glossy finish coating with a thin layer of resin um, so a flexible resin uh, needs to have a glossy finish coating with a thin layer of resin then you need to, to do the curing under water um, to, uh, to be able to do that um, of course you need to keep in mind that this will affect your tolerances and the details um, big time so keep that in mind the good sides of this post processing that you will have clear finish with complex or simple geometries it will give you ultraviolet protection the bad side uh, it will make you kind of orange peel effect on the surface 
it will increase the overall dimensions it's not good for sliding or moving parts so the overall um, performance and properties of the process in terms of finishing you will have four out of five finishing quality tolerances will go two out of five in accuracy the speed how fast is it to do this kind of post processing it will be two out of five it's a slow uh, process Uh, then you have the process called polish to clear transparent finish uh, so the surface is sanded using increased grit levels of sandpaper just a more um, um, more rough sandpapers are used up to 2000 grits um, then you polish the surface with a polishing compound it will give you the most clear surface finish possible for a part produced by the SLA method and it can be uh, possible on surfaces that can be sanded easily uh, uh, of course this process is very good for simple shapes with not too much details uh, it's not great for complex shapes um, then it's not very good um, if you need to do clear finish on both sides while you have complex geometries like ribs and small spaces and uh, it's not even uh, suitable for tough and flexible resins. If your application need your part to be tough or flexible for some reason, um, then these kind of resins will be softer than others due to post-processing. The good side of it, it's a clear finish. It's almost similar to glass. It's giving you a very smooth touch surface. The bad thing, it's labor intensive. It will take you a lot of time to do it. And it's not achievable with complex geometries and overall for the process the finishing is great five out of five tolerance is two out of five so don't you lose some of your uh, geometry consistency speed is very slow so this is the spray paint and this is the polished to clear post processing so you can decide based on your application basically um, the limitation for designing uh, for for making 3d parts with SLA uh, that the SLA printers are usually smaller in volume than the FDM printers um, except some of the machines that are used for commercial purposes for example there's a 3d printer in, in the market called form labs form 2 um, it's very famous very common desktop printer um, the build volume for that kind of FDM for that kind of printer is SLA printer is 145 millimeters by 145 millimeters by 175 millimeters in height uh, there's another 3d printer uh, that is FDM 3d printer called Ultimate Maker 2 um, it will offer you 223 millimeter in length by 223 millimeter in width by 205 um, millimeters in height so if your SLA print geometries are exceeding the printer capacity you can always as we discussed before you can always split the design and make it smaller sections then you combine them together the best way to combine an SLA printed uh, part is by um, combining them with epoxy that is applied 5 to 30 minutes and that should do the job for you uh, in terms of material properties, uh, SLA parts are usually not good for producing functional parts, only for parts that are uh, for visualization purposes. If your part is subject to load or movement, uh, the SLA resins used for printing uh, make the part brittle. So it's not even very stable as the other 3D printed material uh, over long periods of time. Um, you can do some kind of uh, curing in ultraviolet chamber for the post-processing uh, this may enable the parts to reach the highest possible strength and become more stable but again this is not the 3d printing method that you want to use for that kind of applications unless you have to general rules for designing for SLA just a summary the SLA is perfect for small parts that need smooth surface finish and uh, high level of accuracy. 
uh, support structures are critical to have a successful printing and uh, if the good finish is required uh, the part should be oriented so that the surface is not in contact with support material so most likely upward facing so you want to care which face is uh, oriented toward the supporting material SLA parts typically have a bad mechanical properties and they are best suited for non-functional and visual prototyping um, ink closures and visual models only uh, so uh, reviewing the designing features for SLA if you have unsupported walls then you need at least the wall to be 0.4 millimeters in thickness if you have unsupported wall you need 0.6 millimeters in thickness if you have overhangs you should be less than one millimeter in length and less than 19 degrees uh, from level ground uh, if you have an extruded or embossed details you need to have at least 0.1 millimeter in height if you have engraved details then you have you need to have 0.4 millimeter wide and 0.4 millimeter thickness in depth of the part you're designing connections you need to have 0.2 millimeters for assembly connections um, in in clearance and 0.1 millimeter for snug fit for the holes minimum diameter of the hole should be 0 0.5 0 0.5 millimeter or higher um, that should be the design precautions for the SLA 3D printing that we should have in mind while doing this kind of 3D printing. Uh, so moving to the designing a part for uh, using SLS 3D printing, which is the, as you remember, the selective laser sintering. Uh, it, it is used usually for producing functional products, as we discussed and these products having complex geometry geometry um, the technology have a few design constraints you are almost free to do what kind of design you want compared to the other 3d technologies and it is very good if you want to do kind of batch manufacturing if you have a um, not a gigantic amount of manufacturing product but if you have like a 10 parts that need to be manufactured you can use this method flashback on the sls a method you have a laser being reflected on the surface if you have a wall thickness in your design then the minimum wall thickness should uh, be between 0.7 to 2 millimeters to be able to ensure that you have a successful 3d print uh, depending on the material used as well uh, of course and uh, if you have holes the all the holes should be larger than 1.5 millimeters in diameter otherwise it will be clogged and closed by uh, the uh, green state material around it, which means the material that is not solidified 100% yet. Um, uh, then you you need to design for escape holes. If you have escape holes, um, the parts are printed sometimes hollow, so uh, so that to be able to get rid of the uncentered powder. Um, so you have a powder, and then you have a powder feeder in here. So the part will be sitting in powder. Then the uh, base will be lowered uh, to get ready for the next part to be solidified to next next layer to be solidified as well um, so you remove to having this hole will help you removing the uncentered or untreated powder that's still in a powder phase uh, so that they can escape through these holes and uh, these holes must be minimum of 3.5 millimeters in diameter um, uh, feature size if you have this kind of feature then the minimum size to should be 0.8 millimeters uh, in thickness for this kind of feature uh, if you have embossed or grave details you need to uh, to be able to be sure that the these details are visible uh, the minimum depth of gra engraving should be one millimeter minimum height of embossing or extrusion should be uh, one millimeter uh, if you are planning to do some text in your part to be able to uh, to confirm that the text is readable then you need to have the font height of two millimeters and font size uh, if the font size is 14 uh, it can be suitable for any direction sans serif uh, font is recommended for readability and avoiding any complications while printing tolerances uh, the tolerances for SLS are plus minus 0.3 millimeters or 
plus minus 0.05 millimeters per millimeter, uh, whichever is greater. So the tolerance is how much clearance uh, between your part and the next part or between your, your assembly uh, certain part and the part uh, next to it should be following these numbers. Uh, design applications for SLS, if you want to design axles, then you want to use the nylon since it's considered as a natural bearing material where it will provide smooth, low friction mechanism for low load, low velocity applications. And for running axles, a bearing surface clearance should be 0.3 millimeters. Uh, that is the recommendation. Um, you need to have in mind that the powder need to be removed after printing the, after printing the part so that you are sure that the part will be running soft and will not be grinding with, with the powders inside of it. Um, you need to have, of course, in escape holes whenever needed with a minimum of 3.5 millimeters in diameter, uh, wherever possible. And you need to have a two millimeters between the running shaft axle and the clearance shaft holes uh, to allow the powder removal as well. Then you can do, uh, integrated hinges using the SLS 3D printing. Uh, they can work very well uh, by using the nylon material uh, if they're designed in the right way. So a trapezoid shaped pocket that can accept semi-spherical ball will allow low friction and good stability. So you need to have um, in here 0.2 millimeters of clearance between the sphere and the pocket holding that sphere in place. So this is the pocket and this is the sphere itself. So the sphere in here, and this is considered the pocket holding that sphere in place. You need to have between these two parts, 0.3 millimeter clearance, uh, between all other gaps all around need to be 0.3 millimeters of clearance um, so that you will allow this hinge to do his job because this hinge is supposed to move in a circular motion. Uh, if you're designing interlocking parts, two parts that are locking to each other, without having any mechanical constraints or any mechanical tools. Um, it, you can use SLS easily for doing interlocking parts. Um, these parts having high print accuracy and good strength. Um, you, you can do even tanks that can hold some chemicals or liquids inside of it. Um, you can do a lot of custom tank design using SLS. Um, um, if you have aggressive fluids, uh, like solvents, uh, the, 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 maybe the tank material uh, or the tank design need to be coated or lined. Um, when you are designing a tank, you need your wall thickness to be greater than one millimeter. Um, then uh, you need to be able to get out the powder from inside the tank. Any, unfo any unformed powder need to get out the tank. Uh, if you are trying to design some uh, threads, uh, the SLS can produce a rough surface uh, finish. Um, this will increase the friction and cause uh, issue when connecting threaded parts together. Uh, you can always drill and tap uh, the SLS nylon if you're using that material. Um, uh, if you want to do threaded connections, it's highly recommended that you use nylon either you're using hole or bolt uh, but not both if you are using living hinges same as the um, you know the caps we're using for all kinds of applications at home you can see for your detergent for whatever application these uh, living hinges they don't have any kind of mechanical material in here, but through the flexibility of plastic, they are able to open and close for a repetitive amount of time. And same in here as well, there's no mechanical hinges. It's called living hinges based on the plastic um, elasticity. Um, so the, maybe the SLS is the only 3D printing method that you can produce functional living hinges. Um, uh, you need to anneal the hinges by heating it up. Um, you can put it in boiling water uh, sometimes. And uh, then you can flex the hinge back and forth um, 
if you are doing that kind of living hinges you need to have 0.3 to 0.8 millimeters of thickness and minimum of 5 millimeters in length if you compare the SLS versus the injection molding um, SLS parts are generally used as prototypes for determining form function and fit of design that will later be mass manufactured by the injection molding company and uh, the main differences between designing the part uh, with SLS than the injection molding is uh, the SLS part does not need to be removed from a die uh, it's able SLS is easily producing undercuts negative drafts and interior features and the SLS can eliminate the need for costly toolings which will make it an affordable choice if you are doing a small production patch one to thousand units uh, then it's it can produce perfectly sharp edges and um, um, I mean uh, for the SLS it's not able to do perfectly sharp edges and corners uh, it can produce parts that have a radius of plus minus 0.4 millimeters uh, at all edges and corners a radius less than 0.4 millimeters on a design um, will be usually printed as 0.4 millimeters that's the minimum um, the natural radius produced by the SLS will give you some stress relief for the areas that are concerning you in terms of stress then you need to make a larger radius um, that is greater than two millimeters um, so the natural radius produced by SLS offers some stress relief as we said you need to have it more than two millimeters um, for the shrinkage and warping um, there's high temperatures involved in doing SLS printing um, so usually you will notice some shrinkage and warping uh, during the printed parts um, usually these parts are cooled down slowly so that it will uh, reduce the possibility of having warping and shrinkage um, most designs made by SLS have dimensions increased by 3 to 3.5% 3 um, at the preprint analysis and um, uh, that will be done to, to be able to compensate this, the shrinkage uh, this does not affect anyhow the design of the part for the warping uh, large flat surfaces are uh, mostly at risk they need to always to have ribs to increase the stiffness of your part uh, part orientation during printing stage and um, help as well reducing the uh, possibility of having warping uh, limitation for SLS the product size then again the size of the part is limited by the size of the nylon container that's used for SLS machines um, for now like up to now the build volume is 300 millimeters by 300 by 300 millimeters in height with bigger machines offering build volume of uh, they are offering build volume of 700 millimeters by 380 millimeters by 580 millimeters the consistency um, each SLS printed part consists hundreds of layers and there is small variations between uh, the layers and eventually variations between product as dimension surface quality and the because the product is unique uh, most processing steps are done manually this will mean that minor variation can occur like small color or coating variations uh, for the surface finish even though the SLS will produce a good surface finished product the surface finish appearance is a satin like matte finish and it is slightly grainy to the touch uh, if you need a shiny and smooth finish then you need to do a post processing um, most uh, famous post processing processes for SLS are the standard finish just by cutting and using the sandpapers etc um, then um, or, or using media uh, tumbled or vibro polish dyeing painting nickel plating um, sometimes adding coating can improve the functionality of SLS parts as well same as ultraviolet protection color protection chemical resistance increased wear resistance decreased gas 
permeability, oil and salt water resistance, etc. based on the application you're going to use. General rules for the SLS, uh, the SLS parts do, does not, do not require support which give you more design freedom and uh, make uh, 3D printing technologies um, um, easier to be implemented. Uh, SLS can be used to produce many, many functional features like axles, threads, tanks, and hinges. Uh, then it will give you uh, a range of engineering uh, polymides available uh, that are used to produce induced parts using the SLS. Uh, standard surface finish of SLS is matte like grainy surface. Uh, if you want a better surface finish, then you need to do kind of post processing, um, post processing for that part. Uh, in general, the design features: if you have wall thickness, as a summary, you need to have it 0.7 millimeters to 2 millimeters. Based on material, hole size should be greater than 1.5 millimeter in diameter. Skip hole should be minimum of 3.5 millimeter in diameter. Text minimum font height of two millimeters. Feature size should be 0.8 millimeters at minimum. Embossed engraved details should be the minimum depth of engraving one millimeter. Minimum height of embossing should be one millimeters. Tolerances, you need to be plus or minus 0.3 millimeters or plus or minus 0.04 millimeters, 0.05 millimeters per millimeter, whichever is greater.